Well, good evening, good evening. Glad to see everyone here. All right. Uh, this is our special call meeting for Wednesday, August 15th, 6 p.m. here in Stonecrest City Hall. Uh, glad to see all the lovely faces that are here. Uh, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Adama. Present. Councilmember George Turner. Here. Councilmember Rob Turner. Here. Councilmember Jenny Clanton. Present. Councilmember Jasmine Problem. Present. Mary, you have a Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Um, folks, this is a, a special call meeting, unlike a regular uh, meeting. Usually we have uh, public comments and some other things that are available, but for a special call meeting, that's not set up for us uh, at this time. Uh, this junction in time. So, um, if you would please, I would like to ask, in a special courtesy, if you just have to have a conversation, uh, would you take it to the back? Or you just have to talk? If you just compel yourself that you just cannot hold it in, would you please, please, I'm mean, asking you really please, go to the back? Because what you're doing is two things when you don't. Well, this has been our experience. You are disturbing others that are around you. That's the first thing. And two, you're disturbing us. Very difficult to conduct a meeting when I can hear what you're saying from up here. That would not be nice. So if you could, please, uh, just as one time, uh, hold it in. Or uh, I ask you to move to the rear of the place so that you can uh, have a conversation. Uh, the reason that we're here today is that we have several items that mayor and council have been um, um, contemplating, mulling over, having conversations with, negotiating um, that that uh, did not um, move in the, the direction that some of us, or most of us, wanted to with regards to the General Assembly. Um, thank you for the news being here with regards to On Common Ground. Uh, is, is there any other news outlets here? Okay. Seeing none, I uh, wish they were here so that they can actually get the story right this time and instead of um, uh, <laughs> uh, printing incorrect stories and then we have to fix it. So uh, thank you on Common Ground for, uh, for being here to, to cover us. So what you're going to see today, folks, is the council cover um, several issues. Several issues that you have with regards to uh, that's being passed out or that you can uh, receive on paper in the back. And these issues all affect, they affect us all here in Stonecrest. So um, what this is, is an opportunity uh, for council in front of uh, constituents um, to have a conversation about it, where we'd like to go with the individual issues or collective issues. And then, um, and I correct, correct, correct me if, um, if I get off base, um, to have hearings um, within 60 days. I said it correct. I have to advertise at least three times within 60 days, and once it's advertised, then it comes back to comes back to council. All right, say that one more time. I will advertise three times within 60 days, and then it'll come back to council. Council put them in each each time comes back twice. Yes. There'll be a public. There will be a hearing, a public hearing, and for any matter to go forward under home rule vote, they have to be voted on at each meeting after the public hearing. Exactly. So in short, uh, constituents, is that you will have ample time to have your say. Uh, you'll have plenty of opportunity to have your say. And you'll get an opportunity to uh, express what you like, don't like, dislike, whatever that is. Um, but respectfully, tonight is for listening. Tonight is for getting the information so you'll know where to go so that you can have um, your, 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 your comments and your minds made up, you know, whatever direction you decide to go in on the items that you see here. So with that, Mr. City Attorney, we'll, 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 we'll start with you and then we'll also have um, uh, Mr. Thibodeau participate also.
tonight are five, five amendments to the city charter, which are available for amendment by council by home rule. Uh, there are certain things that have to be, that you cannot by home rule change, such as eligibility of this council, member of this council, um, whether the council member votes or not, and those types of things. But the, the items that are for you tonight are things that can be amended by home rule. And what home rule says is that for municipalities, while the General Assembly has all the marbles, and they can create the city, which is what they did with the city of Stonecrest, and they can take all those marbles back if they want to. This is unlike counties, but like cities. They're, they're under the, uh, basically, the jurisdiction of the General Assembly. However, the General Assembly does delegate certain things that can be done, and this is where home rule comes in, which the General Assembly says that can be done. So what are, what's before you are five proposals. And as Ms. James indicated to you, and each of these ordinances, uh, which are before you, have to be, the notice of these have to be advertised in the uh, newspaper of general circulation in the, in the city of Stonecrest for three consecutive times. And after that, after that time, there would be two meetings two readings of the ordinance, uh, which would take place after the public hearings with respect to each one. Different, different than the two read ordinance that we have here is that when we do a first read under uh, our procedures, you don't vote. But the first read under these procedures, you do vote. So at any one time, in other words, you have to pass the thing twice in order for it to um, become law by legislation for that. Um, now, what this, these ordinances do is say to Ms. James, you need to publish the notices that are required, and really that's why we're here tonight, to, to authorize her to proceed in publishing the resolutions that would be necessary in order to give the notice, the public notice that's required under law. That's it. All right, so do you all have any questions about that procedure before I start going through each of these? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, the first relates to an ordinance to amend the charter of the city of Stonecrest, Georgia, for the purpose of amending the titles of purpose of persons serving as any municipal court judge pursuant to Article 4 of the city charter. Under the city charter today, a judge is called a judge unless he's, the judge is the chief judge, it's the head judge, but then you have a judge, a judge pro tempore, which serves at the behest of the judge, and, uh, but also can hear the cases and, and also adjudicate the cases. Uh, there was some issue that the judges brought to our attention relating to their ability to also be eligible for other judgeships, uh, particularly as it related to the judge pro temp. Uh, somehow there was some stigma, I guess, associated with that, which I don't understand why, but this is this really is a request of the judge. So what all of these amendments do is do this, is that it takes away the name of the judge pro temporary. It requires now that a chief judge be appointed uh, subject to the confirmation of the council, uh, which is in a similar way that it's done in this, in this situation here. And if there's more than one judge, then that judge is called judge. That's a judge. And uh, that judge, in, in the event of the illness, disability, or whatever, the chief judge then takes over the, uh, the responsibilities of the chief judge, which is really running the docket making sure that things are getting cleared and getting, getting done and getting placed out. So um, that one is before you tonight with regard to that. Um, you can take them one at a 
time? Is there uh, what I would, what I would entertain is a motion, uh, or you can entertain a motion, Mr. Mayor, that uh, directing Miss James to publish the requisite notice with regard to this change uh, as provided by law. Not voting on the ordinance, but voting on the, the ability to publish it. The ability to publish it. Okay. And council. Um, are there any questions with regards to this before I ask for a motion? All right. And um, seeing none, I will accept a motion for uh, giving the clerk to advertise uh, with regards to this particular change so that um, we can move forward. Mr. Mayor, I'm mostly going to give the clerk the authority to advertise this particular uh, Ordinance proposed ordinance regarding the jazz ship. All right, then probably move. Do I have a second? Second. All right, probably move and second. Any further poll? Any discussion? Again, Mr. Knight, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, and, I, and, I, and I said seriously, thank you. <laughs> is a talented lawyer. He is and that. He, and he and I have been friends. Uh, probably for too long. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Mr. Curry. Really <laughs> Just to be certain and to be absolutely clear, this motion is not a motion to pass an ordinance at this particular time. This is only a motion to start the process to have the public hearings and the public input that is required before we move forward with home rule, with the passing of a home rule ordinance. Is that correct? The passage or rejection. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor, just one question, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Madam Clerk, can you please uh, roll call the votes this evening versus the A and the A? I'm, I'm sorry, what was the question? I missed it. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'm asking the clerk to please roll call the votes on the issues tonight. Reason being is that the video was um, very vague for the last meeting and you couldn't really confirm who was voting for what, and I think it's important for us to know who's voting on issues at every meeting, so it should roll call the vote so that we know for sure who's voting yes or no. That's acceptable yes, that's, that's the rules. Yep. Some, somebody else will second that. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, uh, it says that she can ask for a roll. Okay, okay. Any person can ask for a roll. Okay, so roll call. All right. Yeah, without a second, I thought, yeah. Um, okay. It says in your purview. Anybody can ask for a roll. We're on the same page. And I was asking for it on all, well, we only have five items, right? So on all five items. All right. All right. As well as we, we know that this is also recorded on the internet on our, our website, but who voted for what? Is that correct still? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in the minutes? It, when it says, Unanimously, that means everybody voted for it. Okay. When it says, when you vote separately, it says who voted in favor and who voted against. Yeah. My question is, is that on our website as it, at, at this in, time? It's in the minutes. In, in, in the minutes, it's, it's the on minutes. the website? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's get to it. Actually, take the roll. Are you finished? Oh, absolutely. Councilmember Clanton, this is for yes or no. Yes. Councilmember George Turner. Yay. Councilmember Diana Dama. Yes. Councilmember Rob Turner. Yes. Councilmember Jasmine Cobble. Yes. Mayor. Yes. Motion carries unanimous. All right. All right. The. Uh, the next proposal before you is an ordinance to amend the charter of the city of Stonecrest, Georgia, for the purpose of amending the millage rate cap imposed by section 1.03 B 37A of Article 1 of the city charter. Um, what I read the um, the news this morning in the AJC and talked about a tax increase that was taking place and that recited this particular um, item. So there, I don't you know, to me it was clear enough not to be confusing, but it must have been confusing to somebody. So what this says is this, is that as you, as you proceed um, and 
and you decide that you wish to take over services that currently the county is providing the residents, say take police as an example, take uh, stormwater drainage as an example, uh, take the maintenance of all the roads as an example, then once you do that, which you have the right to do under the various intergovernmental agreements that either have been passed or are in process, then um, the citizens will, of the county, of the county taxes, the citizens of Stonecrest will get a reduction in their property taxes for what they had been charged in order to provide those services. <coughs> so for example, if you decided to take over stormwater drainage and they and the county was collecting one mill from everybody in the in the city to do that, then they would not be able to charge that anymore. So that would go down. What you would have is the opportunity, if you so chose, which you would have to go through the process of the millage rate and everything else. Since you're at zero today, you can only go up. Um, can't go down any farther. Um, then you are able to raise that cap of 3.35% by the amount that the county tax was reduced by that millage. Is that let me give you, I mean, give an example so that we're well, the, all exactly. The example would be, you, you, you know, we write the county and we say, the county, we're taking over the stormwater drainage, we're going to take these fees that you've been collecting and show up on all your property tax bills, each of the residents have them, so then those fees stop as far as being charged by the county. Then what it says is, is that you can charge the same amount without affecting your cap. So it's not an increase in the millage rate. Um, not one iota. It is taking the actual millage rate that they have for that service for the county, moving it over to us. If you want, if you want to use it, correct. We could go. We have could go lower than that. You don't have to use it. Okay. If you want to use it. Okay. Uh, what is found in some of the other cities is by taking over these services, actually, there ended up being a reduction in the overall taxes that were being paid, particularly the area of police, board, which enabled you to get more service for the same dollar. Okay. Council? Yes, ma'am. Attorney Curry, so. Are we trying to become a full service city? Because currently we only offer three services, planning and zoning, code enforcement, parks and recreation. So if we remove the cap, um, what services are we seeking to add? I know you mentioned police services as a possibility of storm order, <coughs> whatever. So the first Stonecrest study was unable to sustain other services. However, can I answer your first question? Um, Did you ask me a question? Yeah. Okay. Yes. That would be that would be up to the council's determination and legislation to determine whether or not they wanted to accept those services or not, and whether or not they felt in their opinion that they could afford to do those services. Okay. So if we remove the cap, as I said, we would remove the cap, which opens it up for us to offer additional services. So the first Stonecrest study was unable to substantiate other services. However, the latter study, uh, which removed public safety, was sustainable. I'm not saying that I'm against public safety, so let's make that real clear. But when, so in the second study, the cap was removed. So I believe, in my opinion, that we need a more comprehensive conversation regarding this and perhaps a study analysis to confirm that this is the way we need to go. We, um, we may be opening up a, a blank piggy bank for any type of project, good or bad. Also, the original cap, the original cap for Brookhaven and Dunwoody. For those two cities, based on what I read today, is still set at the limit in their original charter, which is 2.74 um, mil. 
which is much less than Stonecrest even today, and they've had it there for years. So Tucker also, who incorporated just a few years ago, have not changed their cap, and I believe it may be at 1.5 mil. So we're, cha we're talking about changing a cap without first studying the impact of the vote that we're gonna make today. I don't know of anything that we've discussed that we're bringing on board in the near future, although I'm supportive of additional services. So I think we're in a territory that requires much, much more research. And this stu a study needs to be done to determine if this is the way we want to go, if we want to open that cap up so early with us being such a new city. And my other question is, has someone, has someone calculated if we can truly sustain it financially? And without this information, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with pushing this cap without knowing exactly what direction the city want to move in. We don't have any sound research. We don't have any data, and I'm data-driven. So no other city, Brookhaven, Dunwoody, I couldn't find one. And I, I open it up to the other council members if they know of one, but no other city have removed that cap so early in their uh, becoming a new city. So I have some serious concerns about it, and I would like for the council to consider a more comprehensive conversation before we take that cap off. Thank you, Councilwoman. I'm going to answer the question for you. Before you want to start the clap, before you want to start the clap, please. Let everybody, let everybody answer the question. Let everybody answer the question. Thank you. All right. There's a couple of three things I heard that we need some clarity on. One. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. One. Uh, Councilwoman Odoma, you mentioned about the two studies. Um, and since I see uh, several people that are sitting in the audience, one being uh, Mr. Thibodeau, who was there from the beginning of both studies, let me give you some clarity on that. The reason the first study failed, the reason the first study failed is because of the size of Stone Press originally, which was 82,000, instead of the 53,000 in past. So it was more than just what was happening with regards to public safety or adding on police services at that time. It was the size of the city versus the services that were delivered. Size of the city, 82,000, versus the services that were delivered. Then, in the second study, it was the size of the city, which was 53,000, versus this, the services that were delivered, which is what we have today. That's how the study ended up passing. That's how the study in the original ended up failing. So that was not an apple-to-apples apples comparison. And what I mean by that, and Mr. Knight was there also, is that 82,000 people couldn't get service with the amount of revenue that was coming in, but 53,000 people could get serviced with regards to the amount of revenue that was coming in. So that's the first thing. Second thing, we give some references to Brookhaven and some other folks, and I can appreciate that. That's fine. One is that I asked this survey with the citizens before. The next services that are up, what would you like to have? Would it be parks and rec, or would it be public safety, meaning police? Particularly since we can have a fantastic partnership with the county. Unanimously, the constituents said police would be the next services that will be up. Third, uh, with regards to um, some of the comparisons that we make, I want everybody to keep this in mind, council and constituents. We have a 6.4 and change million dollar budget before SPLOS. Then we reach over 14. Brookhaven has an excess of a 60 million dollar budget. <coughs> and they are 5,000 constituents smaller than we are. We're doing 10 times the work with 10 times less of the revenue, which we're doing a very good job in being able to manage. So the next piece to come up is Let's talk about public safety a second, and then I'll relinquish the mic to the other council persons. Public safety is the next piece, um, quote unquote, that's on deck. So, um, if you look at the mill rate with regards to what the cab is charging for public safety on your tax bill, it's in that five to six millage rate. If we take on public safety, you take that same mill rate, bring it over to Stonecrest, and then at that point, we can decide does it cost that same?
to deliver those services, or is it less, or is it more? So to be able to do that, clearly five and change for a mill rate is higher than what? A 3.35 we have today. So we just can't take that over with regards to um, um, you know, possibly having public safety without exceeding the mill rate that we have today, the cap on it, which is 3.35. And today is zero. We have zero millage rate. Okay, Council. Uh, may, I, may I make one clarification? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, um, I was reviewing the millage issues today, and I had asked uh, Ms. James to send me what information she's had concerning what the county had just recently passed. Yes, sir. And uh, this is an article by, um, I think I've heard this name before, with the AJC, this young lady's name, Tia. Mitchell. Tia Mitchell. Okay. Yeah, here it is, Tia Mitchell. She um, wrote this article, reported on what was done, and um, says the DeKalb Board of Commissioners approved the 2018 millage rates for property owners in unincorporated DeKalb, Stonecrest, and Tucker will pay the same count, same county millage as this last year. Your taxes aren't going up. But in 11 cities, the rate's higher. Now, I think um, indicated that under the charter, the millage cap for Brookhaven was like 2.7. Actually, the millage rate for 2018 is 13.784. I don't know if you got your um, information correct or not. Well, I'm not sure what issue of her information is correct. But my concern is we haven't had discussions. Well, no, 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 I just want to ask the well, question. I'm just saying, I want to clarify what my concern is for you, ma'am. And I understand completely what you're saying. Well, I'm not sure if that's correct. I, I'm right now, I'm not Well, are you sure your number's correct? Well, what I'm... Excuse me, folks. Excuse me. Mr. Mayor, I would like to finish my... Excuse me. Oh, yes. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. City Attorney, you, you still have the floor. I'm through. Go ahead. I just want to make sure that there, there seems to be some well, indication that there may be some conflict in the day. There is some conflict, and I'm not oh, sure. Councilwoman, Councilwoman, yes, sir. let the other council have their say. Right. I want to finish my Excuse me. Excuse me. Mr. Mayor, it's disrespectful. It's, it's not disrespectful. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. We have, we, have, we have six council people. Five and a mayor. I'm going to recognize Councilwoman O'Donnell. But she finished her statement. We recognize the city attorney. And now we're going to recognize the other council people so we can have their say. I was not finished. She was not finished. I was not finished. Ladies and gentlemen. It is abusive. Ladies and gentlemen. Stop me. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you're right. We're not. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Allow us to conduct. Allow us to conduct a business. That's all I'm asking. Allow us to conduct a business. That's a moment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This round, please. Finish, your, finish what this is so the other council can Thank you. And have their statement. In response to Attorney Curry, I, um, until I know exactly what the, where those numbers came from, I'm disputing if those numbers are correct. But regardless of what the millage rates are. That wasn't my biggest concern. My biggest concern is that this council have not had any comprehensive, collective, collaborative discussions on what other services we plan to offer, and we're removing that cap without knowing what road or what path we plan to go down. And I'd like, Madam Clerk, I would like for those comments to be part of the official record. Yeah, that's right. Uh, are you done? I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> May I, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. All right. So, first of all, I would like to say this. Going forward, I think this council should look at making certain 
and citizens have an opportunity to speak at every single time. Going forward, I think that's what we should do. That, that would include any official council meeting. Now, having said that, I somewhat agree with what uh, Councilwoman Adama say in that we absolutely do need to look at every single item on this list comprehensively, get as much information as we can, and employ the public to walk with us down this trail. And in case you all don't get it, that is exactly what we are trying to move to do. We're, we're asking for not to make a decision tonight. There would not be one vote on a yay or nay on any of these issues on this uh, list tonight. Nothing would happen tonight other than giving you all the right to participate in this process, which you all deserve. And I think that you deserve a right on every single one of these issues to make your voices known, your opinions heard, and to get the same kind of information that is provided to council, and get it in a timely fashion. So, in that way, I do agree, and if, if you would allow us to go through with this process to make certain that you all are included and not excluded by council members that are, if Jimmy Clanton say, you know what, um, I think what Councilwoman Jones say is wrong, so I get a, a couple other council members to vote with me and then she's off, that's not right. We, we got to be able to give you guys, this, extend to y'all the same courtesy that you represented us to, to extend in general. So that is my comment for tonight. Uh, in regards to this, I, I just need you all to understand that what we are trying to do is exactly what a Councilwoman said. I don't want to mention is that let's give it some more time, let's give it some more thought by moving this process along. This would give it 60 days or whatever it is so it doesn't go on indefinitely, which is worse than going on too quick. So moving too quick and, and putting it out there indefinite is the same thing. And we shouldn't do that. I think the 60 days that we're asking for is, is, is more than enough. It'll give you guys the opportunity to be involved with us. Make certain, that's why I asked. The, I, I made the comment about the website earlier. This entire process should be on our website. You all should be able to get the same information we get at the same time we get it as much as possible. Thank you. All right. Um, Council, any further comments? Basically, yes, sir. this is important. And that is that this is not the first time we've heard about this. This has been discussed before. It's been discussed from... Uh, this position as well, and from the way it is explained, the way it is written, this does not change your millage rate that uh, you would have to pay. If you're shifting it from one uh, from the county to the city, so what you pay on your tax bill will not change at all in the event that it is employed. But this gives the city the authority to use it in that fashion. And I concur with uh, my co uh, colleague, Councilman Platten, and that is that this puts the issue into play, and you'll have plenty of time to discuss it over the next 60 days. I think it's very important that we as council people understand what we're voting on or legislating, but even more so that the people in the city understand that. So I do agree that we should have more time with this and move forward, that they can ask questions, get the concerns they need answered, and then we can move forward and make some quality decisions on their behalf. Thank you. Council, anyone else? All right. So this process allows that. And um, speaking concurrent of the, um, the sentiments that have been, been made here, that's why we're here, so that we can put these items um, you know, on the on the uh, calendar for public comments and concerns, and make sure that you have your uh, your due diligence and your just say. That's that's why we're here. That's why we are here. As a matter of fact, um, but uh, as uh, Councilman Clinton said, it, we have to get to a point so that you can have a conversation, so that you can have public input, and that's why we will put these items up. So, having said that, 
um, Mr. City Attorney, would you like to have a recap of that particular of that particular item? Recap of the fight, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on, uh, on item number two. What, what, what this is, is uh, uh, would involve a resolution in order to commence the publication of the notice of the effect that this council is considering an amendment to the charter via home rule, which in effect would say that to the extent that there are any services assumed by the city of Stonecrest based upon the legislation of this council, then the cap that's currently in place may be increased by the amount of whatever taxes are now have been rolled back or will not be paid by the citizens in the future for that service. <laughs> um, then to um, make your order clean, I'll take a, a uh, motion to um, move forward with uh, number two. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we move forward with the consideration of the Second Amendment uh, as written and as stated uh, here today. Right. Properly moved. Do I have a second? I second it. All right. Properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, you had your... All right. You call the roll when you're ready. Councilman McCarver. Councilmember Donald? No. Councilmember Bob Turner? Yes. Councilmember George Turner? Yes. Councilmember Clanton? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor? Yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, number three. Okay, number three is an ordinance to amend section 2.07 of Article 2 of the Charter of the City of Stonecrest, Georgia for the purpose of amending the annual salary amount of the mayor. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you, sir. To provide for a monthly allowance ex expenses actually and necessarily incurred by the mayor and council members in carrying out their duties as elected officials of the city in lieu of an annual reimbursement limitation to provide for the commencement date of the salary increase to the mayor and expense allowance increase for each council member to the date after the taking of office no. of those elected no. members. No. <laughs> to the date after the taking of office of those elected at the next municipal election of the city of Stonecrest on November 5, 2019. Um, what these amendments would do is would, the proposal would be to increase the mayor's salary from $20,000 to $75,000 annually. <laughs> and to increase the amount of allowances to the council members to $5,000 and the allowance to the mayor of $8,000. All right, Mr. City Attorney, I have a question for you, then we're going to bring Mr. Thibodeau. Um, I ask that these two things be handled separately. One, one with regards to the mayor's compensation, the office of the mayor, no matter who that is, or, and the uh, budgetary items we just saw. Uh, can we separate those two with regards to what we're doing? Well, as far as what you're doing tonight, um, and the way that it's presented, it's, it's uh, all in one ordinance. Um, however, um, it does put you in a position uh, that if there are questions based upon the dais that perhaps these amounts are not right or should be different, then, I, then you could have those open discussions. Um, and certainly, as far as the form of the resolution, again, as to 
what the people are going to be able to come and comment upon, and they can, the constituents can come up here and, and line up and just say, Mayor, that, that's too much money or whatever it may be. I'm sorry, I'm was the last one. I said, may I continue? You may, sir. And um, the same thing with the allowances as it relates to the expenses. So what I would suggest is this. Um, let's deal with the allowances because there's still some issue regarding those. Um, and ask Mr. Thibodeau to come forward and explain I guess, the beneficial nature both to the uh, accounting with respect to the allowances and the other items that were discussed, particularly as it related to um, 